under attack. What do we do? Stand up, fight back! Water is life! 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 Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Next up, we're going to talk about the immigration ban. Meh. <laughs> I signed the immigration ban, implementing a 90-day ban on people from majority Muslim countries. Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen, wherever they are, from entering our country. Tens of thousands of people, apparently, it's fake, uh, have protested the action in cities and airports across the U.S. Several so-called judges have declared the order unconstitutional. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> well, here to discuss the immigration ban are Joseph Asali and attorneys Jonathan Grode and Maria Elias. Joseph Asali is from Allentown, Pennsylvania. He's currently a junior at Temple. Um, studying biology and Spanish and hopes to attend medical school. Six members of Joseph's family from Syria were detained at the Philadelphia airport and sent back to Doha, Qatar. Um, attorney Jonathan Grode, Philadelphia immigration attorney, um, represents Joseph and his family. Uh, Mr. Grode has been an author, panelist, moderator, and speaker on immigration law. He's an adjunct professor at Temple. Um, please welcome Joseph. Jonathan and Maria. Uh, good afternoon, fellow Americans. Uh, my name is Joey Asali. I'm a student at Temple University. I was born in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and I've lived there. I've lived there my entire life. On Saturday, January 28th, my family and I eagerly awaited the arrival of six of my family members from Syria. The last time I was able to visit Syria was in 2009. I hadn't seen any of my family members from there in several years. The last time, uh, we had begun the visa process for them back in 2003, but the war has made it significantly more difficult to bring them here. My dad bought a house for them in Allentown over a year ago and has been going there every week since to fix it up and get it ready for them to begin a new life. Their visas and green cards were all ready for them to come. But that Saturday, after an 18-hour plane ride from Qatar to Philadelphia, they were detained by airport officials under the newly signed immigration ban. The executive order had been, si had been signed while they were still in transit, and they were permitted to board the lengthy flight prior to arriving here. The airport officials stopped them at the gate and took them to a holding room where they interrogated each family separately. My family members aren't completely fluent in English and were denied the right to contact us and inform us about their situation. We were only made aware when an airport official called my dad and told him not to bother coming to the airport because they stopped my family and they were going to send them back to Syria. They, didn't, they did not allow my family a translator, but their threats were understood well enough. They told my family they could stay legally until the next morning, at which point their visas would be cancelled they would be returned back to Syria and they could not return to America for at least five more years. They said that if they stayed, they would be handcuffed and forced to spend the night in jail. They treated my family like criminals, even the kids, because a piece of paper told them to. When my aunt tried to signal to them that they were Christians and even had it written on their paperwork, the airport official told them, we don't care. They had already prepared return flight tickets for my family and even tried to make them pay for it. They told my family they've signed documents and left on the next flight back to Qatar. They would have no problems and could come back after the 90 day ban was over. My family had spent over a decade and tens of thousands of dollars on the paperwork to come here and they didn't want to risk it all in moments. Fearfully they complied with the airport officials and were forced on their second 18 hour flight back to the Middle East. They were, their passports were confiscated and not returned to them until the end of their trip. It wasn't until they were already on board that they were able to contact us and inform us about their situation. But at that point, it was way too late to help them. My family had spent the entire time trying to call lawyers, government officials, civil rights unions, anything that we could try to do and help bring my family home. When I found out that they were already on the flight back, I was devastated. 
I felt completely powerless to do anything to stop them from leaving. They had sold all of their possessions prior to coming here and had nothing waiting for them in Syria. When they arrived back in Qatar, their visas were crossed out and cancelled anyway. Even though the ban was overturned later that night, we could not bring them back because their visas were unlawfully cancelled. Fortunately, I had managed to reach out to Representative Charlie Dent earlier that morning, and my mom was able to contact attorney Jonathan Grode, who together with other lawyers, government officials, the media, and countless fellow Americans finally succeeded in returning our family to us. Yes! We are so very grateful for all, the for all the support we've received, and I've never been more proud to be an American. This is truly symbolic of what America stands for, and it speaks volumes about the power of combined effort. But our fight is not over yet. This administration's willingness to bar entry to those who need it the most demonstrates just how far they've strayed for from our nation's core values. Trump's labeling of these innocent people as terrorists and threats to America allows racism and discrimination to further take root across our country. The word refugee is automatically associated with negative connotations for some people, and the word has essentially lost its true meaning. These people are fleeing their homes and deserting everything they've ever known for the sole hope of finding safety for their families. I've been thankful my whole life that I was lucky enough to have been born here but it's easy to take for granted the basic comforts of life. We have water and electricity available to us 24 hours a day. Grocery stores and restaurants that we can depend on for food. We can attend school certain that we won't be bombed attending classes. We can sleep soundly at night knowing that the women in our family won't be kidnapped to be sold, abused, and raped. We know that the men in our family won't be slaughtered in front of us and the kids won't be forced to join the ranks of ISIS. A ban on, we can take refugee, we can take refuge in our places of prayer, knowing that our, we won't be rounded up and massacred just because of the religion that we practice. A ban on refugees is a ban on humanity. We cannot allow the Trump administration to shift the ban, to shift the blame from where it properly belongs. Attempting to revive this counterproductive immigration ban only empowers the Islamic State to further recruit persecuted individuals. Absolutely. And it's, they can use it as propaganda to intimidate and scare. This anti-Muslim sentiment only serves as propaganda, and if we allow ISIS to continue on their path and even provide them with their own fear tactics, what will be left of this region in the future if not a larger and more threatening Islamic State? We cannot allow hatred and prejudice to continue shaping foreign policy. We must extend a helping hand to those in need and open our doors for them to begin a new life in safety and comfort. And we will keep fighting to ensure that Philadelphia will always remain a sanctuary city and that... And that America will always remain a nation of diversity and unity. Thank you to everyone who came out today. Stay outraged and keep democracy alive. Thank you. Different mentality, it seems hard, it seems challenging, I don't say